After completing this lesson, you will be able to recall the steps for adding a start form to a process, differentiate between rule inputs, process parameters, process variables, and activity class parameters, and debug a process model. In this lesson, you'll learn how to add a start form to a process, which in the new vehicle process allows Acme Automobile Registrars to add a new vehicle to the fleet. You'll also learn how different types of variables ensure the flow of data into, through, and out of a process. To add a start form, I'll return to Process Properties, this time to the Process Start Form tab. If you don't have a form, you can start creating it now by clicking the Create Interface button. I already have a form that the registrars will use to add vehicles, so I can find it using the directory, or simply start typing the name and then select it from the list of auto suggestions. After I select the interface, Appian will ask me whether I want to automatically create process parameters to match my interface's inputs. Process parameters are variables that receive values at the beginning of a process. These values may come from a start form, but also from other places. I'll click yes, but let's pause here to discuss what happens when you create process parameters and how these compare to other variables that you'll use in a process. If I open the add vehicle form, you'll see that this interface has something called rule inputs. The main advantage of rule inputs is that they can easily pass data between process models and interfaces, and you can use them as variables that capture responses from the form. After you map rule inputs to process parameters, you'll be able to transfer values from the start form directly into process variables, which capture data throughout the whole process and carry it from one node to the next. Next, let's look at the variables tab. This tab lists all process variables for my process. As you can see, these process variables have been pre-populated. Notice that the vehicle process variable is a record type. These variables were created from the form's rule inputs automatically, but if you need to add more variables to the process, you can do so by clicking Add Variable. Later in this process, I'll need a process variable called Approval Decision. It will be used to capture the results of the supervisor's vehicle review. To add this variable, I'll click the button, add the name, type Boolean into the type field, and click OK. I'm done with variables for now. Later, when I add more nodes to this process, you'll see another type of variable. These are called Activity Class Parameters, also known as Node Inputs and Outputs. These are variables that are unique to a specific node. Because they work like local variables, you need to save those into process variables so that they get passed to the next node in the process. Finally, let's update this process model so that each process instance has a dynamic display name. This is done from the General tab in Process Properties. When you create a process model, Appian defaults the process display name to be identical to the name of the process model. A good practice is to make the process name dynamic so that in production, the support team can easily differentiate between process instances. This is the name that you'll see in the process activity tab of the monitoring view, which is used to monitor and troubleshoot processes. To create a dynamic display name, I'll use the expression editor. I'll type an expression that uses the process model name and any other relevant business values held by my process variables. For example, I can use the process variables for the vehicle year, make, and model. Now, the process instances generated by this process model will display dynamic, easy to track names. Let's click Save and Close. Now it's time to save and publish this process model. When you save and publish, the process model will automatically validate that it has been configured correctly. If not, you'll see an error message either in a dialog or at the bottom of the process model. You have to fix these errors before continuing to debugging. To start debugging, click File, Start Process for Debugging. In this process model, you'll see the start form once you launch debugging. I'll type in some test data, and after I click Submit, 
the process instance will open in the monitor process view. After I click refresh, notice the blue highlight. This means that the nodes completed without issues. That's great news. However, I still need to verify that data typed into the form was captured by my process. To do so, click Process Details and go to the Variables tab. As you can see, the variables now contain my data. If the Process Details does not contain data, go back to the node where the data is supposed to be and check that you applied the right configurations. Keep in mind that debugging is an iterative process and you should debug a process model after adding each individual node. Let's recap. Add the start form using the process start form tab in process properties. Process parameters are variables that receive values at the beginning of a process. They are created automatically after you add a start form. Process variables transfer data between nodes. Node inputs and outputs are local variables used within a node. To be moved to the next node, they should be mapped to process variables. Save and publish a process model before debugging. Debug after each new node.